in January of this year, Brittany Lincecum notched her seventh career win at the very first event of the season, the Pure Silk Bahamas LPGA Classic, beating Lexi Thompson in a playoff. And now the lady known as Bam Bam is part of the field in today's Sandra Gold Charity Challenge because golf cares. And yes, she joins us now. Welcome. Good morning, Brittany. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're very like, grateful that you found your waterproofs <laughs> in the truck, aren't it's you? It's so cold. Are we still in Florida? I'm not sure. <laughs> It's going to get warmer when the sun gets a little bit higher. But uh, to, days like today are so important in our sport. And, and you um, players on the LPGA Tour are so good at arranging this. You host your own charity day. So how important is it for you to come and give back to, to others? Well, Sandra is gracious enough to play in mine. So it's just kind of what we do. We, we help, help each other out. And, um, you know, any charity, you know, it's, it's such an honor to be able to give back our time and um, to help great causes. So it's, it's an honor to be here today, and I'm excited. And this is a good time in the schedule, I suppose, because the season just finished yeah. yesterday and you guys are going to begin to wind down what are your plans for the off season are you someone that puts the clubs away for a while or do you get back out and work quite quickly um typically if i was done today I, I would not pick up a golf club for the whole month of december i would be done but um my caddy and i are going to dubai for a, an let event mm -hmm. in two weeks so um, you know, one more tournament and then the clubs will be gone for a couple weeks. No rest just yet, <laughs> but there will be soon. Now, you've had a, a brief warm up on the range there, and I, and I said to Brittany, grab a club. We want to see you hit a couple. Of course, she goes straight for the driver because, yes, that is what you're known for. I mean, is driving just what's always come most naturally to you? Have you always felt like you've had a lot of power in your swing? Um, I'll, ever since I was little, I started playing golf when I was nine. Um, I actually only hit a three wood when I was younger, but I just wanted to hit it as far as possible. I've played with my dad and my two brothers and um, have always just enjoyed hitting the ball far and out driving the boys so uh, it's natural for you said grab a club this is my favorite club yeah who wouldn't <laughs> like to out drive the boys we'd love to see a couple of driver swings sure. uh, from you if you could what is it that you work on when you're driving what's your one swing thought I suppose <laughs> um, well I don't take lessons so uh, typically it's just tempo um, I have a tendency obviously to want to hit the ball as far as possible and uh, even myself being a pro you know we tell amateur golfers you know slow tempo slow the swing down you can't hit it with your backswing but I still try to hit it as hard as I possibly can every time, which I know is not what I need to do. So um, normally my caddy just tells me to slow it down in the, the tempo of the swing, and uh, then it goes further, believe it or not. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, let's see one. Okay. <laughs> eh, little draw. Little draw today. First We're good. drive of the and day. You never had a lesson. <laughs> well, you um, I had lessons when I was younger, yes, but not in the last uh, ten years. Probably. So you don't use a coach now. <laughs> mm -mm. You're just happy. Obviously, you're pretty good at what you do, and your caddy, as you say, knows to tell you a couple of things when you're out on the course in the middle of playing. Absolutely, my caddy Missy is fantastic. She knows. I have a tendency to aim right and I want to hit the big draw and so she lines me up almost on every shot and just makes sure that my tempo of my swing is nice and slow and we just kind of go from there and we find it and hit it again. Okay, let's see one more. Okay, Missy cool. is brilliant. She's uh, one of the few female <laughs> caddies out on the LPGA Tour. I know you guys have a terrific relationship. How many years have you been together We do. Now? I think this is our fourth season and it's incredible the women that we have that are caddies that y you couldn't pay me enough to carry that bag. <laughs> it's heavy. It's almost 50 pounds, 55 pounds when it's fully loaded with rain gear and umbrellas. So, I mean, those girls have to be strong. It's incredible, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, no, I would agree with you, nor can I. <laughs> All right, let's see. That was straighter. You get after it. <laughs> Bam, bam, I wouldn't expect anything else. <laughs> Let me speak to you a little bit about, so um, don't want to bring it up. I'm part of the, the group as well, but there are the, the over 30 set, I should say, on the LPGA <laughs> Tour. There was so much talk about the youth movement last sure. season, but uh, between all the ladies at age 30 or over, there were seven wins on tour Ooh. this season. What does that say, do you think, about longevity in the game when you see someone like Christy Kerr winning uh, now in her 40s? I mean, it's incredible. It means that we can play, you know, until we're 40 or 50. I mean, Julie Inkster is like the prime example. I mean, every time she tees it up, she's in contention and it's incredible to watch her play. And um, it's just, it's uh, awesome. You know, you can play golf, you know, late in life, you can have kids, you can do it all and still compete and be aggressive. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And still come back. Yeah. And then you, you watch things like yesterday and the season coming to a conclusion in, in quite a dramatic way, not necessarily <laughs> what we would have expected. How, how aware were you of what was going on at, at Tiburon towards the end? Yeah, you know, I, I stayed a little bit uh, after my round, obviously being a sponsor from CME. I was with Terry Duffy. We were, you know, in the skybox on 18. It's like the most amazing place ever. Um, so I stayed for a little bit and then obviously I had to, to get home. So I had to kind of 
you know, be informed on the drive. But um, it, it was incredible. I mean, I think it's made for TV. I think the fans really got their money's worth. And right. uh, it was it was an amazing event. Obviously, there's a lot on the line, and everyone played good. And for Aria to make that putt on the last hole, I don't I mean, that hole, I hit five iron into that green. <laughs> I don't know how she made birdie. That was pretty incredible. Hey, how incredible is it for you guys to be able to play for that amount of money now, <laughs> though, the race of the CME Globe? It's stressful, especially that last event. You don't think about it really you know, through the year. You just kind of play your game, and then... You know, it comes down to that last day on Sunday. I mean, to, to have the nerves like Lexi did and, and to be able to overcome that, um, it just shows how, how much she's come. You know, her game is, is transformed and, you know, she thinks more mm -hmm. on the golf course and, and it's incredible to, to see her development. Yeah, it's a wonderful climax to the yeah. season as well. And it's good to talk to you as always. Good to see you swing that big club of yours. And look, if you want to take after this lady, just slow it down. Slow it down. Concentrate on the tempo. <laughs> tip for you from Brittany Lincecum on a Monday morning. Don't go anywhere because coming up next, we will be hitting right here with Sam.